When we write the formulas for compounds with transition metals, we already know the charge of some of the elements. For example, if you look at group 1, the charge on those is plus 1. Group 2, that's plus 2. But the transition metals, those charges, they can vary. So for example, you could have iron with a plus 2 charge or iron with a plus 3 charge. It really depends how it's bonded. To help us write the formulas, we'll use a periodic table, these simple rules, and maybe a common ion table. So let's get started with manganese 4 oxide. For manganese 4 oxide, this is the Roman numeral for 4, we know that manganese is going to be a transition metal because we have a Roman numeral here. So we look up manganese, that's Mn, and it has a charge of plus 4. Tells us right here. Oxide, that's oxygen, so we write O. In oxygen, we go to the periodic table again, and we see that the group that oxygen's in, those are all minus 2. So oxygen, minus 2 charge. Our net charge is not 0, so we need to change the subscripts, these little numbers here, in order to get our net charge balanced to be 0. If I had two oxygen atoms, and each one was minus 2, that would give me a negative 4, and that would balance this out. So I'll put a subscript of 2 here, 2 times minus 2, that's minus 4, plus 4, they cancel out. And that makes the formula for manganese 4 oxide, MnO2. Pause and give this one a try. For copper 1 oxide here, again, we know it's a transition metal. We have that room in numeral 1 there. So we'll write the symbol for copper, which is Cu. And we know it's got a plus 1 charge, so we put that there. We know oxide, that's oxygen. And we go to the periodic table. Look that up. Oxygen has a charge of minus 2. So our net charge isn't balanced. To balance the charge, we're going to need a plus 2 over here. So we're going to need two copper atoms, and each one's plus 1. That'd give us our plus 2. We put a subscript of 2. 2 times plus 1, that's plus 2. That cancels out the minus 2. And that makes Cu2O the formula for copper 1 oxide. Let's try one that's a little more challenging. Iron 3 oxide. Iron on the periodic table is Fe, and it has a charge of plus 3. And oxide, that's our O, which has a charge of 2 minus. We want to balance the charges here, but we have this plus 3 and this 2 minus, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. I like to start out using something called the crisscross method and then check my work. In the crisscross method, I'll take this superscript here and I'll move the 2 down here, that's the cris, and we'll move the 3 to the subscript for the oxygen, that's the cross. So now we have Fe2O3. But we need to check our work. So remember that we had the plus 3 for the iron, we have this here, and then the oxygen was minus 2. If I have these three oxygen atoms, and each one is minus 2, my total charge, 3 times minus 2, that's minus 6. For the iron, I have two iron atoms, 2 times plus 3, that's plus 6. So the plus 6 and the minus 6, they do cancel out. That makes this the correct formula for iron oxide. You can clean it up, and there you have it. Iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3. Okay, now you give it a try. Pause and write the formula for copper 2 nitride. For copper 2 nitride, copper on the periodic table is Cu, and it has a plus 2 charge. And then nitride, that's the nitrogen. So we put our nitrogen here, and then we go to the periodic table. It's in a group with a 3 minus. So we have plus 2, 3 minus. We'll use our crisscross method. Put the 3 here and the 2 here. Clean it up. And that gives us Cu3N2 for copper 2 nitride. But let's check our work. We had the plus 2 and the minus 3. 2 times minus 3, that's minus 6. There, plus 6. So yeah, that works. This is the formula for copper 2 nitride. Okay, one last type that you need to learn. These are transition metals bonded to polyatomic ions. This looks a lot like the one we just did. The difference is, instead of nitride, we have nitrate. And that A-T-E tells you you have a polyatomic ion. So let's see how we name it. So to write the name, we have copper with its plus 2 charge. 
And then because of the eight, the nitrate, that means it's a group of nonmetals bonded together. We need to look that up on a table of common polyatomic ions. We go to our table, we see that nitrate is NO3 minus. So we come back, we write NO3 minus. It's important to note that this minus, minus one, applies to the whole NO3 compound. So we have NO3 with a minus one and then the plus two on the copper. So we still need to balance our charges. So we need two of these to get a minus two to balance out the plus two. So we'll put parentheses around our nitrate and we'll put a subscript of two. Two times the minus one, that gives us a minus two and that cancels out the plus two. That makes the formula for copper two nitrate CuNO32. So pause and give this one a try. Copper two phosphite. For copper two phosphite, we see ITE. That's a little different than the eight, but when we see ITE, we also know we need to go to the polyatomic ion table. So we'll write copper, that's our Cu, has a two plus charge, and phosphite, let's look at the table. We see that phosphite is PO3 three minus. We'll use a crisscross method and check our work. So let's move the three here as the subscript for the copper, and we'll move the two over here. We'll add our parentheses, clean things up a bit, and that gives us the formula for copper two phosphite. Let's check our work. We had the plus two on the copper and then the phosphite, that was minus three. Three times plus two, that's plus six. Two times minus three, minus six, Charges balance out, net charge is zero. We're good. That makes this the correct formula for copper to phosphite. For lots more practice naming and writing formulas, visit Breslin.org. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.